I told you that in your initiation, that this whole science is divided into three parts. First, you blast off, which is the breath. <coughs> blast off don't land you, but it gets you out of the ozone ring. And the communication is you on the craft flying to where you're going. That's the mantra. And when you're landing, is when you stick your finger in your eyes and listen to your ears, that's when you're ready to land on the particular point of reference. And so all the gurus only want to teach you what? The last two, they don't want to teach you the first one because why the figure of modern man. But uh, modern man is more aware of some of the basics and make it easy for him to adapt quicker. Because you can look at his own spacecraft, Cape Canaveral, and realize he could never put a uh, man on the moon if you don't blast it off with a missile and break the ozone area and then travel in a craft to talk back to NASA and then get ready to land with the instructions where it's going to land. So that's why it's cut up in a three, four way. Cross and chariot, what does the cross represent? It represents taking, uh, taking the cross? parts of the element. You see the cross? You see the cross? Do you see your cross? Do you see your cross? Do you, where, which one of the zones cross over? The office. <laughs> <laughs> you, you understand that? That's your cross. All of them there, but they are going to be, I said, I don't want to tell you that you're a puppet on a string, but a puppet is a string that you connect it to the galactic system, <laughs> which you call horoscope, <laughs> because so the magnetic field feeds back in to the point of time when you come in. But the blue is the only one that will connect both sides of the body. That's right. So because the blue controls that time. So, in the beginning was the... Yeah. The other question I have is... Well, let's keep the question because we're losing time and we'll get to the questions up after. We need to get a lot of this data so you can... People that go home, they'll be able to work on their bodies and so. Let's keep the question now. So they'll be ready. For the moment, keep the question. Let's go through a lot of data here. <laughs> You know the zones go through, you know they're all set up. There are five of them on either side of the body, front and back. They follow in certain colors representation because they have to do the chromatic pattern. So keep in mind that the colors are not your friends or your enemies. They are recording principles for chromatic resonances. Every traumatic resonance has to be recorded in a color zone. We don't carry pictures in our mind. We don't carry words in our mind. We carry what? Geometrical colors that we associate from a photographic, hologramic pattern. So there's no one part of the skin you can show me a recorded data. But yet the same way you can bring it to the, by a certain equipment to the surface. So the point is that the zones are set up in such a way that you can go immediately to lock into the corrective mechanism. Now, on this back end here, we have the reflexes. So, and in the side we have the reflexes. So. You'll notice as you become familiar with the <coughs> reflexes on front, back, and side, one thing to keep in mind a reflex covers a minimum to a maximum of one and a half, two inches thin stretch. So anytime you run across an area that you smash or hit, it 
can go to a reflex, which is a what? Something looks similar to in another location of the body and feel for the sensation of the pain that is registering there. So you have what is called a local and a distal reading. The local reading of the kneecap is there the pack, the impact of the blow, and the distal reading of the of the kneecap would be where? Elbow. 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 Now you have other distal locations too, because each pivotal point is a representation of the whole process. Your whole head is a representation of the whole body. Your whole face is a representation of the whole body. Your whole ear is a representation of the whole body. Your whole tongue is a representation of the whole body. Your whole eye is a representation. <coughs> so your hair is a so now name me a portion of your body that you aren't printed off. Oh. Every part of your anatomy from head to foot, piece by piece, is a replica duplicate of the whole body. Now doctors haven't done this, but I've heard every photo. The sexual organs are also printed out. The tears, the uterus, and everything are also printed out. Just as the tongue is printed out. The breast is also printed out. But you see, that kind of research would be considered very <coughs> obscene if it was given out to the that we, they have to keep it to give the reason to teach it. And for the initiate, for the only ones in India who had the mass, who had it all taken down way back to the So every part, there's no way to get around. This wonderful mechanism, not being a print off for each pivotal point. Each spiritual point is set up to be a total representation. The reason why is because you have two fellows working inside of you. One is called DNA and one is called RNA. <coughs> and, uh, DNA is the manufacturer and RNA is the deliverer. An organ uh, heart needs one milligram of iron every three minutes. So DNA manufactures one milligram of iron to be sent to purchase of heart <coughs> every minute, but has to retain RNA allied to our delivery service <laughs> to deliver this. But then uh, they're on the road and they get all kind of harassment from the pumps and so forth. So instead of delivering one milligram every minute, they deliver half a milligram. It's like uh, those uh, tapes that were supposed to be here. Half of the set came and the other half is still to be coming. It's kind of a game on game that's going on. All right. So heart calls up uh, DNA and says, hey, look, I only receive a half. I didn't get my full share. That puts me in a what? Hypo or hyper condition? Then DNA calls RNA and says, what happened? I gave you both. Or maybe delayed or misplaced with due to lack of handling. But we'll catch it up. In the meantime, to keep the uh, customer happy, send me one and a half milligrams so I can uh, rush it over and I'll have one in reserve. In case, just in case of emergency in the future, this will be there available to them. So DNA will send one and a half more milligrams to RNA. RNA will run over. Here's your half a milligram, Mr. Hart. Good. Oh, boy, I got it. Now, everything. Then they got one in reserve, and then from then on, the agreement between RNA and DNA is what? So send two instead of one, so always keep Mr. Hart one. Right. And that's exactly, we end up inventing it as efficiency out of our own brain effect. But these guys are putting it together inside from their own pathogens. As opposed to below, as inside, so it's outside. So we don't have any new concept coming out other than our own internal uh, malfunctioning, setting up the reaction for uh, fulfilling the need. We start to see it after a while that we're 
internally directed all the time to act on the requirement. And so this is the phenomenon of why the elements are set up in your mechanism to have a front and back uh -huh. and a side in terms of a specific as an acupuncture, uh -huh. wide as a reflex, distal and local. And phallic overrides it all. So we're not dealing right now with we're trying to establish how it's set up so we can go apply the phallic by this pattern. So you have your front, your back, and your side. And these are going to be your references all the time for your reflexes. And as I say, in the location of the reflex, you have a minimum to a maximum one and a half. Two taken off of the walls of Egypt by uh, Moses and he, uh, people always call it a scarab or well, in actuality it was not a scarab it's the actual body set up as a spaceship but what was missing in the drawing was the ambulators we can go right back to the hand and feet and correct all the internal movements, distal or local. Now, if the zones are running down like this, <coughs> we'll all end up here ah. if we don't have any what? <coughs> ambulators. They only extend themselves to the ambulators, right? Mm -hmm. But basically, they run from head to and they curve back up like a circle all the time. But they, because we have ambulators, they run off into the ambulators and then they switch at the ankle to be front back and they switch the wrist to be front back. On the, on the lines that go around, is it like a chill? Is it just chill concentric or are they just planes going straight back? Straight, straight line running through. So does it extend across from here to here or does it go around the center of the okay. It's going right through your body. Right. No, a long time. As if I take a knife and cut you down in pieces. Like I cut this wall, okay, this way, a couple of red stuff. He used to tell a story about a guy who took a class about that and didn't believe you. And there was someone in his job got a terrific electrical shock and had it to be burned in the fine zone. Yeah. And he thought, he came back to me, he thought it was not an eyeball, and all the zones were delineated by the shock. Oh, wow. 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 So that's what the fact is that the thing runs through like a, yeah. you're stacked up like a hot cake. <coughs> <laughs> That's what you want to <laughs> No, the reason why you, you set up that way, you study geology. Geology is the other way, putting you that way and stacking you up. When you go in the ground and you dig in the ground, what do you find? Stacks and layers, and the same thing with uh, standing up. You are a miniature replica of an environmental fact. So you have to have them in segments. So, so when we're dealing with the zones, you are the, those layers, you're referring yourself to the five the layers. You have the same phenomena going on, so it's, it's very easy to recognize that say, as a box from below, and we are a minute. All these metaphysical people were talking truth. 
truth is one thing you can't prove. It's another side that is proof that you can't prove it. Who ever proves truth? Don't you try to disprove it? So you can't prove truth. truth yeah. And then when you don't disprove it, what you're doing? You still say it's nebulous. Yeah. When you disprove it, you call it a what? Uh-huh. Then that's what the truth is all about, isn't it? Not be lived. That be lived is still anticipating to do what you ain't gonna do. What living is doing what you've got to do because you're doing it. And that's why you say liver is not deliver. Uh, so what is that stuff about the liver that nobody likes? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> so another <laughs> we have three zones going um horizontal and five oh. zones going vertical. Is that right? Well the zones will be the solar nutrition of zone one, which is the upper part of the body doing more than what yeah, but those zones are set up for light. Uh, the three zones are set for light. This is set for something entirely different. This is set for reflexes. And it's set for what? What's this one? And what's this one? Yeah. And what's this one? Yeah. What's this one? Yeah. And what's this one? Yeah. So it has to go the whole mechanism right through? Good. Now. Yeah. You have the front, the back, and the side operating under those same five. Now we have two ambulators, a foot and a hand. The foot is the fastest. Why? Because all your great pieces come back to where? At the hand of the master, I bow, or at the foot? <laughs> and Jesus washed the hands of his disciples or the foot? So what tells you this is take priority for The feet take priority over the hands in reference to reflexes, even though the hands may have to relate foot still, because that's the extreme end of it. So there is where you set up now your other zones in terms of the spectrum. <coughs> you used to use an analogy of a window shade. God rolls himself down in the morning to the feet of the last and rolls himself up at night. Like exactly. <laughs> so we're going to line you up now. <laughs> <laughs> God rolls himself down from the brain to the warning and the feet the last three plus and rolls himself back up. So the consciousness is always being brought up when you go to sleep where you meditate. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody loves it. <laughs> you see, none of, none of the Eastern gurus will love me to say it like that because they said that's very, very crude, Daniel. <laughs> well, I said, well, tell me more. I don't know if when you're not going to try to come down to the back up. So we're working our way back up instead of working our way down. <laughs> so that from here to here, where the red line stops, all that is red zone. Where the orange stops, we are in the orange zone. The whole thing, red. This is red across here. Yeah, that's the orange That's across now. We're talking across to run off across. That's red to the base of the pine. Your foot. Here, 
The beast is flying in right here. So there, so between your orange line and the red line is all orange? Yes. The, the whole calcaneus or heel bone is red, so it's just yeah. the bottom yeah. part is pretty bigger, but it's is it the whole bottom is red? Yeah, they don't color it, but they oh. were going to be... Oh, that whole area is okay. red. So, so I color it in all red? Yeah, you can color it in all red. Uh, I'm just uh, dividing it up for you. Now, where do you stamp your feet? Do you stamp your toes or you stamp your heels? Yeah. Why? Why do you stamp your heel and not your toes? And so, you see red and you're coming to a standstill. You don't want to change or you're forced to sit and you're beating your heel. That's exactly why that, that area is referred to as the red zone. We didn't make it up, we stuck in it. All the research is now are coming up to this fact that the lower region of the mm -hmm. foot. We're reading the head as the toe and at the base of the foot as the base of the body. You are a reflection of it in the foot. <laughs> <laughs> then the yellow is in this way. This is the red area, this is the orange, this is the yellow, this is the green. You got a heart? Yeah. Where is it located? Left side. So. You look at it? Oh, come on up and let you look at that. So it's the heart and the green or the yellow? It's all green from below the green line? Yes. Down to the yellow line? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 See the blue? Come and see it because you can't see from there. You have to see it. But if you come and see it, you can draw it in your own uh, chart. The first question, that's the red, with the whole cartoon thing. So that's the thing. Right here, it doesn't drop it here. Here's where the section organ comes in. From where the section organ begins right in here. Ah. Your lumbar. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> the yellow right there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a little different. Okay. Lumbar is there. Okay, well, it's just a little bit. It's just a little bit. It's just a little bit. Oh, 
It goes to seven because the upper two is divided into two, giving it a uh, violet and a purple. Uh, you said that number seven don't show in a human body, otherwise we have six fingers. So why does it show on a vertical level, except in a hypothalamus? That's all right because you, when you stop the big two, which part hurts the most, the tip or the middle? The tip or the middle? Yeah. The tip hurts the most because that is going to register in the top of the skull. So that's why that's the, the uh, violet range. So that's why you, you put that uh, portion there to represent the violet because it's going to, you have to go back into the skull and release the pressure there in the skull. Yes? Yes? Some people have a big finger. No, that's not really what you <laughs> yeah. You always find one of those divide out of the middle. Is that right? Always go through one of the middle. Is that right? Yeah. 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 From there. The violet only has three tones, right? Did you make it? Oh, right. 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 The little tones are just barely touching. Because why? They are already left the physical liquid and you're in the temperature gas sonic range of the soul. So there's very little going to be on your two little toes. Most of your problems in your toes are always in your big toes. Because that's the one you hit the most. Really? So when you step in your toe next time, you have to be able to help you to make it Again, I know it's over, but I have it right here. Sedano? Is the one I need to work right here? Yeah. To this? Okay. Right. The middle of the toe? Right. Uh, 
Oh, we got that already? No. Make sure you get it because that's what's supposed to be. You got it? Yes, I <laughs> Better come and get it. No, it's just, you know, it's this is the dividing line. line. This is the yeah, dividing line. We saw red This is violet, and between the, 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 the blue and the, yeah. the uh, no, no, and the it's violet, violet and the on purple. the top. It's purple in between and indigo. The violet is here. This is the purple and indigo. This is the blue. From here to here. Well, I don't know. From here to here is green. From here to here is yeah, it's a violet. 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 Here, I'll you that. It's the blue or the dawn, it turns into the Some people don't. Yeah, some people have cold toes, some people have hot toes. It's all right. That's the, the, the range of the pink and the white. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hot. got the outline of what we're going to work on. There are <coughs> three things you've got to remember about a reflex. And that's what you take into account very fast. Local point of injury. Distal point of reference. And interaction between the two in the central part of the anatomy. Therefore, the central part of the human anatomy has an unusual principle.
Dale con Movie Step. Movie Step. You take a circle and you twist it. And if you take a line and draw on it, you can go on both sides of that object and come back exactly where you started without getting out. <laughs> Have you ever seen it? You take a piece of paper, you, start, you make a circle out of it by twisting it now, and go one in. Then you take a pencil and go on the inside and come on here, and come right back to the start without getting off the pencil <coughs> and getting off the paper. Drawing that's, a line on both sides of the paper. Right. And that's exactly what that area is set up for. It's one uh, there's a reason why it has to be yellow. But I'll tell you something. <laughs> now, <laughs> it's also divided into eight colors. <laughs> you know where you enable it? It's a lazy egg. So you have what? It's like a configure it over it front and back. But you have eight colors there. Oh, uh, let me see if you got enough common sense now to see if you can figure out where the eight colors will go, how they will go front and back. To here on the right side is green. From here to here, the left side is blue. From here to here is orange. From here to here is red. That crossover point is yellow on the label. Yellow. 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 Yellow.
What color comes to your mind to represent panic? Panic is not cowardice. Red. Red is not uh, fear of uh, change. Green. Black. What color comes to your mind when you think of panic? What is panic to you? You know panic? 
No light. I don't think you think of white when you're panicking. What do you do if, 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 you're, if you're in a state of panic? You run. You're hyper. You're overexcited. You're into emotions when you're in You missed the question. <laughs> If you breathe uh, and suddenly the breathing leaves you, what would happen to you? But what is a uh, what is that person experiencing actually? Lack of oxygen. Uh, they actually oh. lack of what? Oxygen. Which produces what? Consciousness. Oh, listen to what you just said. Lack of oxygen. So panic is a result that leads to what? Unconsciousness. Unconsciousness. Sleep. So rule number one, don't what? Yeah. Which means don't do what? Yeah. Don't get unconscious. Stop breathing. Don't stop breathing. <coughs> Until you fall off a building, you don't know the difference of what happens in motion, 30 feet going at a speed of 32 feet per second per second times your body weight. Are you conscious or are you totally black? Until you hit the ground. You should be conscious. You could black out first. You go through all three. You black out, you're conscious, and you impact. It's the impact that gives you back your consciousness, and at the same time, make you disassociate from the form. Otherwise, you're already shut off the time you fall. The air is going too fast in your nostrils, there is no way to reciprocate. That's why people don't feel nothing when they fall off. Business. What about skydivers? That's how you come to find out that the body is already set up to, to shut down. And when you hit the ground, you really don't feel anything. It's a cushion effect. What happens to, like, in parachutes where one guy doesn't know he falls a long way and another parachute grabs him off? And what happens to him? Yeah. Well, you could fall for a long way so, before you open your uh, shoes. What are you looking for? Breath free or breathless? Breathless. breathless. Good. Now you know what would, what would breath free bring you? What color? Black. Black. And breathless will bring you what? White. All colors. White. All colors. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's what white is. For the person who falls asleep in a panic state? Yes. Yes. Didn't Brother Jesus say don't fall asleep? You need Every to be you for no it. other <laughs> behavior <laughs> in your mechanism <laughs> other than <laughs> what? Sleep. Falling asleep. I'll be happy. And then you say, you have to come out to stay to sleep. You go through the color spectrum. <coughs> no. Life is simply going faster than all the colors. Right. Sign it. <laughs> then you regain consciousness while you still and think you're sleeping, but you're not in a, in a movable state. So, the important thing in your health, then, is what? Don't panic. <coughs> That's all I can tell you. When you cut the cord, yeah. what color is your brain? Probably a panic state. Until you breathe in, right? It's like a light bulb, it must be all colors. You should cut the when oxygen. You cut the cord and you separate from the mother. What color is going on in your brain? Black. 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 You're totally black. You don't have a single thing to relate to. <laughs> and if you don't get no oxygen, 
<laughs> the next color is blue. You come down looking blue because you're not getting oxygen. Then if they put you, <coughs> they call that what? <coughs> they call that blue. Remember what you're saying, now. You're getting oxygen via what? <coughs> She's not breathing for you, man. Crystallization. She's breathing for you, man. Good grief. That's why I want you people to go to school and know you're not letting it be done. No mother breathes for you. She's breathing for herself, but you're taking it from her. What is water made of? Hydrogen. What does human being need to stay alive with? Where is this a so-called extended tumor of the mother getting its oxygen from? It's nothing but an overgrown tumor that she's going to call a child until it's cut and breathe on its own. Every doctor knows that. That you ain't nothing else. Till you breathe on your own, then oxygen as a gas goes up your nostrils to activate your brain, causing you to be conscious within your mechanism. Other than that, the, the mechanical movement of the so-called behavior of the child is the mother and the father's frustration working back through the element in the shape of a fetus or an overdose. Well, a fetus and dollars is in the sleep room, moving in a solid. And why you get, why you get if the mother do not hear the data while she's pregnant with the fetus, where is the fetus supposed to store data? That's why you have to look at the fact that you're not a human being until the cord is cut. And all the arguments over abortion and non abortion is stupid when you don't realize that. The oxygen that comes in to you after the cord is cut weighs exactly <coughs> a certain weight that makes you entirely different from when you're inside the womb to when you're outside of the womb. When you're inside of the womb, you weigh a certain weight. When you're outside of the womb and the cord is cut, if you were the same, then it is right to the woman not to have an emotion. But it doesn't weigh the same, and it will never weigh the same until ready to quit. <coughs> now the weight is exactly one three thousandth of an ounce more <coughs> after the cord is cut, not before the cord is cut, and it will remain one three thousandth of an ounce more until you take the last <coughs> breath. Now as soon as you take the last breath, and the way you before that breath empties out of your lungs, you become breath free, then you will be one three thousand of an ounce left. And then you say, Where the hell did you go? Elements provide an outlet for the individual form that is living to die in a force field called elements that come let us put together a form to interact. So Creative intelligence is that <coughs> point of one two thousandth of an ounce differential between the fetus and the active moving being, putting the elements together. The 144 elements are there outside and inside, <coughs> and that call is cut. That one two thousandth of an ounce is the evidence of the creative intelligence. Wasn't there a three and a half ounce? I remember three ounces. One, two thousand. Yeah, two ounces. That's the first experience we have after the court has cut it on, panic. All of us experience that, or some of us, or... Yeah. Until we start to breathe. Well, it's not... Our first experience is the panic. The panic is the question about the oxygen. So as soon as we have oxygen, our first awareness... No, not your first awareness. The oxygen that is moving you in the fetus to make you dilate and constrict. 
when the cord is cut, what happens to the people? Does it constrict or dilate? Right. Oh, right at the, the point. Yeah, as soon as you cut the cord, what have happened to the people? Does it constrict or dilate? Dilate the No, it constricts because it's like suction. There has to be a pressure differential, so it has to constrict in order for the air to come yeah, back. That's what I'm trying to establish in your brain. What, what does it really do? Constrict or dilate? It constricts at the time of dilation. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the potential of trauma is because your constriction occurs there and then you're over dilating the outer side of the You have a fetus. Okay. It's hooked up to a mother pumping like a balloon. So You've the cut the cord. Would it constrict or dilate? Dilate. It cannot dilate. It, it has, has to, to constrict. constrict. That's why it's it dilates. There's more pressure outside than inside, so it has to back It constricts back, and is in that constriction, this so called label called panic is registered in the cellular structure as a memory level because it starts to blacken down. Then, the doctor has to work very fast to get what? The dilation to come up back. So he hooks you up into a unit if you don't dilate on time to see how long it can do. get you to work. But that has to come back up, so to pump back again. So you constrict the dilate, the constrict the dilate. But you're already dilated as a fetus, ready to come out. Yeah. Opening is there, expanding, dilating for the fetus to shoot out. When the cord is cut, it is a definite constriction in the fetus. Then the respiratory pressure goes in to dilate it. That's why you constrict the dilating organ. So that's why you're trying to establish that when you start treating the body for your own problem, instead of panicking or worrying what you're going to do, there are only two things to remember. If your bone is not broken, and you don't have a bacteria, don't panic. If you've got a broken bone, go look for a doctor. He's always on the telephone. If you've got a bacteria, look for a doctor. He's on the telephone. Call. So why panic is number one. But if you don't have a broken bone, you don't have a bacteria. This is what you've got and you'll always have. Structure representing bone, the pivot, inside of a passage. This is nothing but a hollow tube. It has an opening here, but the opening tends to constrict and dilate to prevent the fluid from falling out. And the fluid is inside, <coughs> looking for an exit. <coughs> but each exit has a kind of a way to keep it from not shooting out. So it has a what is called a free time automatic compression dilation, <coughs> so it doesn't shoot out. Then you have in that liquid. You have a gas going through it. Pushing the liquid against the skin of that nice passage. And in that liquid, we got a bunch of objects called minerals moving around. And outside of that same passage, you got a fellow going, I guess, called pressure. And inside of that same skin, you got another fellow going that way called pressure. But this is only maintained as long as this opening called a nose stays on time. You 
look at a worm to add the angulator, and you consider the angulator to be subworm, an ossify. So to panic when you understand that these are the contents of this sausage, it's not valid no more. So when you get a, a hit on the surface area of the sausage, and that will be like something come along here in the form of and hit this object and cause a sensation in here. You see where the sensation is going to travel? Exactly. Exactly out to the other side. So this side is going to be more sore. Point of impact or distal point? Distal. Because of it and not. So you don't go worry about it because this is the one you're going to complain about. Now, remember, when the impact came there, before the impact, this object was doing do re mi fa so la si do. <laughs> then this impact came along with a re 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 pow. <laughs> <laughs> so did re knock out re? <laughs> or re knock out me? Or re, re knock out pa? We don't know till the blackness kills up. And therefore not. going to change for nobody. C, D, E, F, G. So when I hit Mr. Sausage. Which one is getting hit? The D. G. The G. Ah, G. Uh, yeah. What the hell did I do to myself? Somebody? Oh, G. So D gets knocked out by A and D. A and B will change you. A will make you go fast, so you got a hyper condition, and B will make you go slow, you have a hypo condition. And our friend, the musician, who is our host, <coughs> his son also is a musician. All know, nobody likes to play. And my other friend over there, whose son is a musician, no one likes to play in B notes. They, they like what? A, C, and the But no one over there is A. So the son says he didn't like to play, but he loves me. He didn't want to be. And he had better just to die very tough one. So that's the sound. A will make you hyper and B will make you hypo. So you are set up to live what? So D E F T. D E F T. The impact of the point of entry is one and the other point of exit is the other, right? That's right. Which is the uh, hyper point of exit? Depending upon the impact. How so? If you have a hard impact, what would you get? A hyper condition or a hypo condition? Hyper. Hyper. That's right. It's very hard. Hyper. And if you got this, what do you got? Hypo. So, a soft impact gives you what? A hypo condition. Therefore, a soft impact would be in the C wing. And a hard impact would be what? A hyper condition, right? Yeah. And that would be in the A range. A soft impact will give you a hypo condition. And that's in the B range. I said B range. Yes, you did. 
are the only security. So what you're doing is you have a unit that is turning these trunks into the mechanism uh, for the normal function mm -hmm. to pull all other areas back to the line. But trunk makes heat. Right. Most people don't know that. Kind of a mess, right? Yeah. And that heat was observed after. But then, when the results came up, they made devices to separate the sound from the heat. So now we have units that are giving only the heat, we call it the silent sound, and then the units are giving the audible sound without the heat. This happens to be a two in one. So when I came across it, I thought I got this. I don't know if you're right. That's the way it is. And I couldn't figure out why would it, a unit just getting some get that hot. But then I began to look at it. It was using metal as a displacement. Mm -hmm. Using stainless steel as a displacement. Uh, it's a conducting <laughs> surface area where the surface area of the instrument can now be utilized <coughs> for the displacement of the heat to work on the surface area that is been treating with the resonance. So the tip has a resonance effect, building a heat by the non-moving part of the sonic in the container, and the container just getting hot. hot. Then that heat can be applied directly instead of a heat pack on the area, and so a maximum value of the unit is a 10 minute plate. So you can work the unit in 10 minutes to the heat point and then take off. You can take it off from the plug because it's converting AC to DC. So you can take it off and that will keep that cool, but the unit itself will keep the heat for another 10 minutes. After you heat it up, then it will cool back down and then you can plug back in and go back to the sonic. So you have a two-in-one unit. You have a heating device unit and you have a sonic <coughs> device unit acting yeah. as one. Oh, Mine is from the I don't know. We get the best effect on a reflex. Then you can put the heat there and keep it there for a minimum of two to three minutes at one spot and then move it around. But you must move it. Remember one thing. Therapy, and this is the mechanical, you're getting the terror out of the fist out of you. And the fist in you is locked up in your bladder in you because you kid yourself with your kidney. And so you freeze yourself up. And so if you put in heat in an area of soreness longer than a certain length of time, you're going to back up your whole system again in that uh, passage. So don't go do that to yourself. Wait, I missed what you said. If you, hmm. you don't want to keep a treatment on an area too long, keep it moving. Uh -huh. And even when you turn off the unit, you're going to use the heat. Don't stay longer than a minute to two minutes in the spot. Move it on. Otherwise, it will build up a backup system. Nature doesn't like what? Constancy. Constancy. Congratulations. Do you know how much time for that vinegar soap? Vinegar soap is exactly eight minutes on your back. Don't do it longer than eight minutes. You can cut off before eight minutes, but don't do it longer than eight minutes. Because you're setting up what is the, normal, the, the reaction in the opposite condition. So everything has a time frame. Yeah. So don't go vinegar soap to help beyond eight minutes. But people call me and say, I got a stiff shoulder for the vinegar soap. And then I got a, a acid coming up. So I'll do this to yourself. I'm going to show you something, and those who ever be a victim of it, I have to keep it as my own memory of my wonderful student, who is a doctor today, when he was doing it, 
and he didn't oh, listen, boy. then you have to see the results of what we call overdoing therapy thinking you get in the best results by being there long enough to get the maximal results. See that spot there? It's smooth now, it heals itself, but the thing is this. It's a rough area. It leaves a rough because of the overreaction of working in the one spot too long, even in the uh, raw thing, because your own acidity of the therapist and the patient, the therapist acid may be bad for the patient. Mm -hmm. And so when he was doing a demonstration, he didn't realize that his body was so toxic. And I allowed him to demonstrate, and then he said, so now you learn from this that you don't overwork no more body because you see what it does. Well, I don't mind the point is this, you have to learn that. Today he's a very good doctor, and he doesn't overwork none of his patients. <laughs> and I don't want you to go overwork this person because that's not valid. You must understand the time frame, let alone for your own health. Your health is very important to you, and therefore you should know that the time frame is important. And don't overwork it, because you'll have what is called a backup on the crystals. Uh, uh. So it's better to go uh, over an area quickly and then uh, come back to uh, the area for the time. Exactly, because you set up what is called the rhythmic correction. And this was where you find out 10 minutes is maximum, then the heat ratio builds up, then you unplug and then use the heat into the area. But the more you can move around, the better. And that's why reflexology is so wonderful because it's working with quick movement and it's interlinked with the kinesis. Kinesis can do exactly like reflexology. So you said don't overwork the body because they can't back on this and that will push Dump the toxins of the person working on you or uh, your own toxins will back up on you. It's like they found when they had that uh, earthquake in Armenia. Yeah. The people in there had so much toxins, the pressure on the muscle. Right. And then when they took them out, they, they went into a coma because exactly. of the electricity. Right, exactly. Acid in there. Exactly. That's what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. You mean when they found them and they took off whatever yeah, they were laying on yeah, them? Yeah, whatever they, they were laying on. Then the muscles then they were, they were, they were so untouched. full of uh, yeah. lactic acid that it went into their system yeah. and it put them, some of them in coma. The more you hear of uh, recovery programs and the more you hear of these different oh. things, you'll see what we're talking about is validation of your body. The only few things to worry about. Don't worry. When you're born broken, you need a doctor. When you have a bacteria invasion, you need a doctor. But as far as you helping yourself very fast, you've got the liquid, the gas, and the mineral in there. This is the acid or the element. There are only two acids you got to worry about. One is lactic acid mm -hmm. that builds up in your tires. And two is uric acid that you retain too long. Mm -hmm. And the other gas you got to worry about is what? Carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. As far as the fluid is concerned, you either perspire or you store it. So, if you don't panic, then you do the most appropriate thing with your breath. Show me. Ah, oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and because of that, oh. you are automatically dilating out the opening wherever it is <coughs> and gas rises more than it goes down, right? <coughs> so the upper orifice is a faster exit than the lower orifice which will send the liquid out quicker. So this orifice will send out what? The gas out quicker. So by yawning, you automatically set up what is called the accordion function in your system. And you start to heat. So then you can work on your reflexes now. Let's see where the young lady is with her foot. Right there. Okay. Mm. Yeah. You see this here? 
all this ash is really locked up in here. But yesterday, you couldn't touch her at all like that. You see what I'm doing today? You're working the area with your hands for to put them in the kitchen. But about um, one fourth of what it was last night. <coughs> 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 Massage the deep zone, type of zone? Yeah. So, as long as there's this problem in the area, there, yeah. in a harmonic oh, or whatever, right. <laughs> a, a range that's still intact in the zone. That's right. Now, look at your chart and see if you can find um, mm -hmm. the knee and the foot. The knee and the, and the, and the foot. foot. The whole pressure will go all the way up to the hip. Right. <coughs> so, therefore, you have many organs now that are going to be involved with a, a knee injury. Yes. And so, when you go to the foot, you are automatically releasing pressure in many organs that are related to that one uh, point of impact. Now, you want to take your unit, you can first work with your hand like that and loose it up. And ask the person if they sort it or your own self if they sort it. Then you can take the unit now. Where is your unit, lady? Yeah. Let's use your unit because you know your unit better. Okay, then what you do first, you come in, you see what I'm doing? You see what I'm doing? Yeah. Then I shift over and I go up. Then I go around. You hear the sound? I don't hear yours. Is yours on? Yeah. Oh. I hear that. Now ask her what she's feeling. See what I'm doing? Working all around the area. Then I'm going to go up. <coughs> See what I'm doing? <coughs> now remember, I came up this way, right? Yes. And if I look down where the, the point is, I'm going in a straight line towards it. When do you use the edge of the machine? Is it more pressure? In this particular case, you use the edge. Okay. Because we are mm -hmm. here in this point, I'm not this way. You're in the orange zone. It's more accuracy in other words. I'm on the edge. Uh -huh. So I want the edge to get the pressure. Okay. 
So if I was in the middle, then I go to the middle this way. The problem is not in the middle of the foot. The problem is where to the edge of the foot. So the reflex is at the edge. So that's why you use the edge. If you use this way, you don't get the result. You gotta go this way to get it. Because why? You have to compensate for the structure of the foot. Is this area harder than this area? Yeah. Is this area softer than this area? So if I went this way, I get the effect of this. If I went this way, I wouldn't get. When I go this way, I get the effect. So because I'm going this way, do you see what you're doing? Uh, look how fast you guys are understanding. You're not that though. Put them together in your head, eh? Oh. The more you can recognize, the more you understand, and the more you understand, you don't panic and you don't call it down on the phone. <laughs> I know that. I, I appreciate it too. However. You see what I'm going? This is a lot of bone. You see what I'm doing? A lot of bone? <laughs> now, you see how far I'm going to now? Yeah. Now, look where the injury is. Look where I'm going. If you started out on the edge of the foot, that would be the red zone. That's right. But then you came up along the center. You go of the towards leg. from red to what? Orange. Orange, orange and to what? Yellow. And to what? Green. And to what? Blue. And then you come back what? Oh, and you come back out. No, but I meant here when you came yeah. up, you come along the center, so you went staying with this zone. You see what I did? Yeah. What zone is that? This is the yellow, uh, the middle is the yellow zone. So why I come up here? Tell me why. Well, and that's then come up the rest. But out here is the red zone that you started on. And, but I came up and went where? Yellow. Well, I would say the yellow would be up in here. Is it? So you must be in the orange right there. It has to do with the temperature. Is this a what? What do you call this? particular piece of your anatomy. Mm -hmm. You know of any other place in your anatomy that has kept? No. So what is a kneecap doing for you? Also doing what? Also doing what? Also doing what? Taking sonic. The resonance point. Keep talking. <coughs> you were told, Mr. Boogie Woogie, what a skull cap is to a kneecap. Well, I know it's the reason that you found your skull cap and you got a kneecap. <coughs> Yellow. <coughs> you, know, 
I'm amazed the people who speak English and don't remember all the crazy terms they say you're weak in the knees, you're full of baloney and all that jazz. You're kidding yourself. Weak in the knees. All that boils down to what? In terms of emotional reaction. Kidding yourself. So what color comes up now? So you have to come up the same zone area from a fixated pattern into So you could have come to the top of the foot and not over on the side of the like here? But you can't do that because you're doing what? You're moving upward. You have to start up from inside here and work around to it and come along the side of the bone. Okay, I thought you were saying like you stay over here. And then you come into it. And you work through back on it. But if you came like this to her, watch. Mm -hmm. Look at how much more low flight that bird is. Mm -hmm. No. That she couldn't take right away. I don't know, what do you know? 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 What do you know?